Of all the things that surprise me uh, about parenthood, about having kids. Was um, it the fact that you forgot you had kids? <laughs> no, it wasn't that. Oh, that, my God. That, that would be surprising. That would be surprising. But uh, I always knew. I always knew that uh, kids were weird about the things that they would eat. They would have the things that they love and the things that they don't love. You know, it's like, you know, broccoli. You always think, okay, kids are, kids, you know, broccoli's no. tough. It's going to take a while to get used to broccoli. Mushrooms. Brussels like, sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the one about, I don't know if other kids have this, but my kids, um, yeah. potatoes. What? <laughs> I know. I know. Potatoes. They're like kid crack. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's uh, like mashed potatoes, roast potatoes, baked potatoes. Trippers. Yeah, all of these delicious yep. potato Potato flavors. juice, yeah. potato ice cream. Yeah, yeah. This, well, actually, I just, just on that, you know, I, I looked through, okay, mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, boiled potatoes, roast potatoes, potatoes with butter, potatoes with salt, potatoes with sour cream. Potatoes with butter and salt. Potatoes in a stew, potatoes in a curry, potato salad, potatoes dauphinoise. Smashed potatoes, potato bread. I went to I went to potatogoodness.com. This is not for all of the recipes that my kids don't do, eat. Do, but uh do, Dauphinoise. Which is with oh, you scallop geese? them up. Scallop them up with cream and, and French people. Mm. Um it's it's I thought that was uh, cretin. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I know. Uh, anyway, anyway. Uh there's there's beer cheese potato soup. I mean <laughs> beer, beer cheese <laughs> potatoes. Tick, here's, tick, tick. here's a couple of weird ones. Mashed potato donuts. Mm. Delicious. Uh, loaded potato spring rolls. Not so weird. Uh, Madagascar vanilla scented potato crepes. Okay. Uh, Mexican breakfast bowl with spiralized potatoes. Mm. And if you are listening to this podcast in the morning, as we are recording in the morning with a coffee, you can have cold brew coffee smoothie with potato. I, I don't want to. <gasps> so the weird thing, the weird thing I, I, I for me was that my kids didn't. Like, uh, like even any kind of potato? Yeah, okay, chips. Chips are the, are the potato they do because no yeah. one doesn't eat chips. You are obviously no, you're not human. from Satan if yep. you don't eat chips. But yep. beyond that, like it's like mashed potato. It's deliciously buttery and salty. Uh, but they're like, can we no, have some? Not <laughs> I'm pretty hungry. <laughs> All right. Uh. Australians eat about 50 kilos of potatoes every year. The whole country only eats fifty kilos. No, all of us. Uh, each each one individually. So you may eat a little more. My kids, no, I have to, no, I have to, I have to eat, not. I have to eat the sixty kilos for my kids. That oh, yeah, I need gotta, the, yeah. For, yeah, I got to yeah, balance gotta, them out. Yeah, but that's fair. Uh, that's fair. Uh, yeah, yeah, fifty kilos. So where do you reckon that puts us in the global potato stakes? Eighteenth. Uh, no, no, uh, lower. We're not good at potatoes. We're not twenty ninth. Yeah, well, further further down. We're not getting we're not getting any Olympic medals for our potatoes. We are. We may grow great potatoes. Mm. Australian farmers. Oh, you're the best. Yeah. Shout but, out, uh, Spud farmers. We are not the big big potato. This boys. one's for you. We're number forty four. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, we beat New Zealand. New Zealand's number forty nine. Which uh, we can beat them in anything except rugby, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, but but we are a long way behind the potato big boys. Uh, who do you reckon? Uh, who do you reckon the potato big boys? Germans have got to be up there. Um, surprisingly not. Czechs. Uh, surprisingly not. Americans. Surprisingly not. Holy shit! Okay, uh, Peruvians. Uh, Peruvians are in there. Peruvians make about number about number nine or something like that. I thought that. they'd be higher. There's a. I think there's an actual potato research center with the UN in Lima. Yeah, sure. That's where potatoes are from. Originally. Somewhere up Have there. I just ruined everything. No, not at all. Uh, they haven't ruined anything. <laughs> I'll keep trying. <laughs> keep swinging, champ. Uh, what the, 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 the? Wow. Okay. I'm confused now. All right. Um, Canada makes it into the top fifteen. They're about seventy. Kilos oh, which means the Belgians must be up there too. Then. Uh, the Belgians might actually be in there. The Belgians beat Canada. So just above Canada, the United Kingdom. There, it, it, it varies every year. Obviously, you know, mm. some people some people go for a bit of potato craze. Mm. It mm. varies. Uh, the UK, they're like number eleven or so. They're like eighty to hundred kilos. Still only number eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Belgians, the Belgians are around the UK, maybe a little bit ahead. Yep. Um, but no, we have to go to your people. To your people. My Baltic people? Yeah, the Baltic people. And, well, the Baltics are, are doing pretty well. So uh, let's go Russia. They're getting – this is where we start getting into the big leagues. <laughs> they actually invaded us. No, I know that. I'm going to I'm gonna get to your people in a second because Russia's, Russia's about number six. Um, they Does that are, include vodka, though? Uh, potato and vodka. Uh, yeah, I don't potato know. Skins and that's vodka, really interesting. Yeah, I wonder if that's a, a hybrid. Ah, oh, that's really interesting. Um, anyway, yeah. Mm -mm. Ah, well, you've, you've thrown my it. chart. Yeah. Tear it up. <laughs> Tear it up and start again. Uh, they're about 100 kilos of potatoes a year. Four. The Latvians, hey. 115. Um, that, that Latvians get to be number four, 115. It's the only thing we've been that good at. But 
right out the front. Well, well, like, and there's a, there's a gap. There's yeah. a huge gap between number it's one and number two. It's not the Irish, two. surely. It's not the Irish Thank God, that would have been anymore. Too, that would have been too stereotypical. Belarus, Belarus. So they eat the solidly more. country. <laughs> they, they eat 190 kilos of potatoes a year, about four times as much as we do here in Australia. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, so I worked this out, 190 kilos a year. I reckon an average potato size is maybe 100 grams or something like that. It's, it's, it's a good approximation. You can get smaller Kipfler, potatoes. Your Desiree. It depends, of course. Your Blue Devil. Oh, yeah, I know. The chunky meaning. Royal Blue, the chunky meaning. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it varies, of course. You know, the big, the big fat ones, sometimes they might be uh, kilo, 150 kilo grams. I, if you've got a kilo potato, that's okay. a, uh But I reckon about 10, 10 per kilo. We're not counting baby potatoes here. We're no. getting full-growners. Screw full grown. the babies. Yeah. Anyway, so that, that works to be about uh, 1,900 potatoes a year in Belarus, or about five potatoes every single day. Good God. But this, this is absolutely nothing historically. Because on a typical day in uh, the mid-19th century, those people that you mentioned before, the Irish people, uh, uh, an average adult Irishman ate about six kilos of potatoes every single day. And nothing else probably. And nothing else. Yeah. I shit you not. So this is probably, yeah. I worked this out, about 60 potatoes every single day. Oh, God. Is it time to eat? I don't <laughs> want to. <laughs> about uh, two, two tons a year. Um, oh, fuck me. <laughs> The, the kids kids ate a little bit less. The kids ate like four kilos of potatoes. Well, they're smaller. <laughs> four kilos of potatoes. Or, you know, like 40 potatoes every, every single day. day. One 19th century traveller observed, the Englishman would find considerable difficulty in stowing away in his stomach this enormous quantity of vegetable food and how an Irishman is able to manage it is beyond my ability to explain. <laughs> Going away. <laughs> Welcome to The Wholesome Show, uh, the science stories podcast for people who set up the back of the potato farm. Yeah, in which we ask the uh, spud-related starchy questions every time, whether they're relevant or not, so you don't have to. The Wholesome Show is me, Will Grant. And, and me, uh, Dr. Roderick Griffin, carbohydrate Lamberts. Carbohydrate. That's my gig, man. It's my jam. 65 potato potatoes in a day. I, I... 65 in a day. <laughs> I, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't even want to do that once. <laughs> and I fucking love potato chips, but 65 kilos I, I love chips. potatoes. I love potatoes. They're great. But Ooh. I can't imagine 65 potatoes in a day and then doing it tomorrow and then doing it the day you after. Every meal, <laughs> new torture, <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> It's nothing. Wait till you see lunch. Oh <laughs> be awful. We've cut them into different shapes before we boil them and mash them for Oh, you. my God. Oh, it'd be hell. I'm, I'm anti. The potato is believed to have originated in the Andes Mountain, as you said, in Peru, uh, in, uh, around there somewhere, up in, uh, up in the mountains. It's, it's amazing the little things I know about shit that's un unnecessary or useful. Yeah, well, it's, uh, yeah, South America, but it's not like from uh, jungle South America. No. It's, it's mountain South America. I think you mean jungle. Which, which you would, you know, I, I don't sit around wondering what the original ecosystem of a plant is normally, but I wouldn't have thought you know? potatoes are a mountain plant. I, yeah, actually, I don't know what I would have thought. If I didn't know that, I would not have guessed it. Like, That's right. at all. It's not on the history test. Uh, Spanish explorers took the plant home to Europe uh, oh. in about 1570. Um, it's said that okay. British explorer Walter, Sir Walter Raleigh introduced it to England a few years later. And yeah. it's weird. I mean, I know this is the, the bias of English history. Um, what? But so many people tell you know, Walter Raleigh brought, yeah. brought the potato back from South America. And it's like, no, oh, really, the, the, the Spanish people did before. He just brought it from Spain. I mean, maybe he brought it on his no, own. No, 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 no. I've seen the episode of Blackadder where they cover that. <laughs> which is which is basically my English history, I yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, he then introduced potatoes to Ireland. But potentially. Potentially. <laughs> Allegedly. Uh, look, there's a little bit of debate about who okay. first brought potatoes to Ireland. But let's say 1589, okay. he uh, brought potatoes to Ireland and planted 40,000 acres of them near Cork. Um, why, why mess around? Oh, you go big, go big. How it's going to be yeah, 40, well. Well, that was, acres. We'll start there. That was originally a problem because originally um, it was a t it was a garden crop of the gentry. I, I assume what that means oh, is it's like fancy. Yeah, it's fancy. Like you'd have it in your your fancy cottage garden, like your, your garden outside your big mansion. 
Um, and there you'd have your herbs and your where potatoes. They just really spring out of your compost heap and go. Oh well. There you go. Yeah. No. It was it was a fancy thing, and it wasn't really popular amongst uh, the Irish folk. Um, no. And in it's fact, English. Well, there was a rumor that it was poisonous. So so people were like, no, this is no. I, to be I, fair, I, good reason to not be popular. I, totally, totally. And and when I come to it in a second, um, the Irish had a pretty awesome diet before then. So so maybe they had a pretty good reason. <laughs> Another not to. thing the bombs have done um, to them. Uh, well, actually, yeah, well, I'll tell Correct. that bit now. So um, the Irish at the time were super, super, super into dairy products. They were, oh, like you know, delicious. They, they loved it. Um, cream, milk, cheese, anything, anything oh. of the cow, they were all over. In like fact, bits of grit fall off a cow and they were pouncing on it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> In 1690, one British visitor to Ireland noted that the natives ate and drank milk above 20 several sorts of ways. And what is strangest for the most part is they love it best when it is sourest. Well, you fucking love milk. That's all I care about. <laughs> I, 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 I don't care. But when it's sour. Uh, so they had... They had a, Do you like it when it's a bit off? <laughs> they had a thing called... Um, Apologies for the Gaelic here. Uh, Bain Claber, uh, which... You need more cl- I'm sure. Bain, Bain, it could be Bain Claber. Bain Claber. That's perfect. Accent free. But it translates roughly as thick milk. Uh, Ooh, clotted. And was stuff. probably somewhere straight b- between old milk and sour cream. And that would be the thing that you'd be after. You, you want it when it's a little bit old, not quite sour cream yet. I, I do? I don't know. There was a, there was Not a, as Irish as I thought I there was. There was a, a 12th century satirical monk. Now, I don't quite know what that means. If he First was... First time I've been interested in joining the clergy. <laughs> what kind of monk do you want to be? I'm the joke-making one. Can I be satirical? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fucking goals. Wouldn't it, though? Oh. Look, I don't doubt it. There All they pro- do is take the puss. There was probably a lot of monks, and he was like, well, maybe my path is to... Everything else ma- has been taken. I'm making jokes. Oh, that'd be um, cool. So in the 12th century, the satirical monk uh, wrote a fake vision in which he travelled to the paradise of the land of food, where he saw a delicious drink made up of very thick milk, Mm. of milk not too thick, of milk of long thickness, of milk of medium thickness, of yellow bubbling milk, the (laughs) the swallowing of which needs chewing. (laughs) And remember, remember, this is paradise. (laughs) That's what hell looks like. Only, only three kinds. I'm just yellow bubbling milk. Uh, the swallowing of which <laughs> needs chewing. <laughs> anyway, anyway, never a good sign. Anyway, back to potatoes. I love, I uh, love dairy. I love dairy too. Dairy oh, is, yeah. is is awesome. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, um, it's weird. Uh, so the landed gentry grew some potatoes mm. in their in their fancy gardens. Yes. Um, but they decided, hang on, hang on. Everyone's got to get into the potatoes. So the government, and government is not really a thing at the time. There was government, of course, but it was... Uh, Monarchic? Yeah, it was... It, yeah, it was lords the, and uh, l- lords, lords and monarchs and stuff yeah. like that. The government ran a promotion campaign uh, for potatoes. So... Uh, big name landowners and members of the royalty got around urging their tenants to plant and eat the crop, um, and it rose wildly in popularity. What's the vested interest? Oh, d- well, d- well. Call me cynical. Well, we'll come to that. Okay, we'll come to okay. that. But they, the, but uh, yeah, the landlords were super keen on getting people to plant and eat potatoes, and they did. Um, so uh-huh. It, uh-huh. it took off enormously. So going from not eaten at all before they came to, as we said before. A 65 potato a diet, uh, day. So the yeah. serfs basically got bullied into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll cool. come to that. that that's so, probably the only time in history that's happened. First of, first of all, it was supplementary. Like they're just adding potatoes to yeah. their yeah. to their butter, milk, and grain products, which which uh, sounds nice. I mean, you've got mashed potato there. Mashed potato, um, porridge. But uh, increasingly, it became like the number one. It became the staple. It became everything that they ate. Uh, so by yeah. 1800, 1820, it was the staple food of the poor. Um, and mm-hmm. a disproportionate share of the potatoes grown in Ireland were of a single variety, the Irish lumper, which is a... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a name for a turd as well. <laughs> it really does. I've had so many Guinnesses um, I did an Irish lumper. This, um... Yeah, it's, we're really setting up for trouble then, aren't we? Let's, are we? Just, are let's, we? let's just have one kind and see what So what happens. are you saying? What are you saying? Rapid change in, in diet yeah. and, and just one kind? Yeah, I mean, look, we, oh. all, we all know what happened in Ireland at some point around this time, but talk about a way to make sure it happened. I, I don't <laughs> doubt it. I don't doubt it. If, you, if you're adding your risk scenario here, uh, well, here's, here's something that adds your risk tomorrow. Um, probably, it's, it's a little bit unclear what caused this, but it might have been the potatoes. Yeah. Um, uh, but Ireland's um, population boomed yeah. uh, from between 1740 and 1840. 
Um, so in that period where potatoes coming, uh, it went from two million to nearly nine million. So wow. it, it skyrocketed. Wow. I'll show you some graphs in a second, but it went it went on this amazing climb. All some right. people have also said smallpox inoculation made a big difference then, uh, possibly. It, uh, look, um, it wouldn't have hurt. But yeah, tremendous growth and an only potato diet. What are you thinking? This and 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 one strain, one strain, just the Irish lumper. Let's specialize immediately. Okay, yeah. so so that went fine. Um, flash forward to McDonald's. Yeah, that's, that's the end. Boom. That's the end. And end McDonald's made chips. Boom. In 1846, 30 year old Roger Cantwell lived in a small cabin on the estate of George Fawcett, Esquire, Ooh. in uh, Fawcett. Tumivara, Tipperary, with his wife Mary and their five children. Tumivara, Tipperary. Yeah, I know. I know. It's it's, it's a long way there, you know. <laughs> uh, five children. Uh, so Roger and Mary have Bridget, Thomas, Michael, Julia, and little Mary. No Patty. <clears throat> Not no, really, they didn't. Not really. They didn't. Nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. Like so many other farm labourers, they relied on potatoes. So they're eating their potatoes. Yeah. Um, they had um, a single acre of uh, of land that they could farm as their own, and then they would work on the on the landlord's farm. An acre's it's, quite a bit of land. It's it's it's, it's you, you can get a lot not tiny, that. but yeah. but it is a bit of a problem. Like you can't you can't have um, cattle on it on a single acre. Like or that's a, not or a tennis court if you've got cattle and potatoes. Uh, yes. No, that, that's a problem. No, not many peasants had tennis courts. Shuttlecock. Like, maybe. I mean, it would be a big risk if you're a peasant to go, look, I'll eat less, but I'll have a tennis court. Those fuckers get recreation. We want it too. <laughs> um, yeah, a single acre of potatoes could yield six tonnes of food, which was enough to feed their family. Wow. So they would, you know, from six tonnes of food, they'd get their 164 potatoes every day, divided into 23 each, obviously, with more for the, the larger folk and oh. less for the smaller folk. God, they must have been so healthy. <laughs> and, and not completely... Your pile of potatoes. Exactly. And rendering the phrase, what's for dinner, completely obsolete. Uh, uh, it's, just, it's just dismal. It's just dismal. For something that uh. I know... A good potato on a good day can be so delicious. Delicious. And yet, yet this is just a way to make it so dismal. I don't want to eat ever again. Anyway, uh, as Roger says, and this comes from a, a nice um, a publication of his diary uh, mm. many years later. Yes, <coughs> yes, yes, yes. It had been raining a lot that October, uh, even more than usual for Ireland. Perfect. In October 1845, almost overnight, a dense blue fog settled over our puddled potato fields. It's asking me to do an Irish accent where it says puddled potato fields. On, like I, I can't, I can't re- resist. Do you know what? I, what? You don't sound Russian when you do that. I know it's the only other one. I'm confused. <laughs> an odor of decay no, this permeated is big, this the is a big air. Day Will has two accents. <laughs> no, three. I've got my own. No, no, no. You, your your English is accent free. Oh, I, yeah, okay. We all enough. know that. Sorry, so there was a puddle. A puddle, a puddle a pu- over the taters. And, and a dense blue fog. An odour of decay permeated the air. When the wind and rain died away... Nothing to worry about. There was a terrible stillness, oh, which, God. you know, I think, I think that's a little bit of uh, uh, looking backwards on that. But anyway... The old poetic licence. The potato crop was ruined. Destroyed, we learned later, by the fungus uh, Phytophthoria infestans. Never name anything with the last name of infestans. Yeah, it's, really, it, it gives it nowhere to go, does it? It did. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I know what my job is. <laughs> like they could have named it Nicey yeah, or Delicious. Pets. Anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use that that no. Latin name again. I'm, it's the potato blight. Call it the blight. The the, the blight. It's indeed. the blight. Uh, the leaves on the potatoes on many fields I passed were quite withered and a strange stench, such as I'd never smelt before, Christ but which horror. became a well known, uh, filled the atmosphere adjoining each field of potatoes. And just when you, I mean, obviously people didn't travel. Huge distances, but no. they would have travelled. They would have walked around their villages. They would have gone to the local towns for market day and things like that. Yes. And in this year, 1845, you would have seen field after field after field after field of stenching potatoes. Now, it was about half of and, the and fields. To, I mean, you know the smell of a rotten potato is one of the worst things I've mm. ever had in my nostrils mm. in my life. Oh, God, Yes. I remember, yeah, had one horrifying. once in a pan. Oh, horrifying! And 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 the mush and the grotesque. It's yeah, yeah. They turn into complete evil in a bag. Like I, the first time I smelt it as a kid, I couldn't believe a smell could be like that. Can you can you imagine uh, tons and tons, fields acres. and fields of them just uh, walking for days, and this stench? Uh. Yeah, it would only be eclipsed by the smell of vomit because people would just be bleh, yep, the whole, yep. Oh, <clears throat> God, the horror. So yeah, the records show about half of the potato crop um, was lost that year. Um, so there were still some potatoes, but it was, it was pretty bad. This immediately plunged the rural poor into a crisis. As you know, as I said before, they depended on those potatoes. Um, 
Uh huh. They had some other problems as well. They had milk still. Uh, no, yes, yes, no. But the other problem they had was rent. Now, little sidebar here. Your favourite people. <coughs> My, yeah. People who charge rent. Yeah, exactly. My favourite people. Now, just a, just a sidebar on governance here. Because uh, I don't know if you know, but the politics of Ireland uh, has a little bit of antagonism um, with uh, the United Kingdom. Does it now? Yeah, it does. Here we go. No. <laughs> and I love the does it now. Does it now? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a fact? <clears throat> In 1845, Ireland was effectively a colony of Great Britain. Mm-hmm. Now, they, they kind of cheated and they pretended they weren't a colony and, and the, name, <laughs> the name of the overall country was the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. So they're saying, no, you're in the title. Like, you're, you're, you, get, you get top billing. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, just, it's fine. Yeah. But, 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 you got uh, your name on the building. No one else does. Well, and, and also, uh, Ireland did send representatives to the House of Commons. Okay. Um, so they've they've got politicians going to Parliament. Um, they sent uh, satirical politicians and to the, ha- the, the yes to the 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 landlords as well. We're going okay. to the House of Lords. So it did sound like they oh, they, they had, had some involvement. Irish lords, okay. Um, but so it doesn't sound super colonial instantly until until you look at <laughs> who gets to do what because all of the elected re- representatives were landlords of British origin and their sons. Imagine. Um, it doesn't sound super colonial until you look at until it. Until you look at it. <laughs> until you look at it, yeah. Because suddenly uh, you realise that anyone um, who is native to Irish, mm. to Ireland, to, who uh, either speaks Gaelic uh, or is or is Catholic, um, uh, they mm. were in uh, about 1800, well, uh, up until 1829, prohibited from owning or leasing land. So you just... You just cool. Yeah. You, That's you, cool. That, which sounds quite colonial to me. Um, they were also prohibited from voting or holding elected office well, obviously. under the um, so-called penal laws. No land, no vote. Yeah. So, so yeah. So as much as they did send um, elected representatives, the representatives they sent had been sent there first to then send back. So it's... Well, they could do the other option where you have the uh, US uh, Senator for Guam who has, what is it, observation rights and no vote. Ah, oh, it's better than nothing. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> now, uh, just to clarify here, many of those laws had been repealed in 1829, so uh, it wasn't as uh, super racist uh, in a- 1845, but a lot of this was still hang- uh, lingering around. And the key thing... It was still uh, the English, uh, the Anglo uh, families owned the land, yes. and the Irish Catholics were relegated to work as the tenant farmers, as um, forced intended. to pay rent. Yes, on their own <coughs> land, which, yeah. Okay, cool. Now, as we'll find, some of the landlords were okay in this saga. Some of the landlords were not okay. Well, sure. One percent, surely. <laughs> Bad apples. There's this one guy. He's okay. <coughs> So the failure of the potato crop in 1845, so this was the first year, uh, caused a lot of, lot of hardship, but not, not mass death. There, there was certainly some starvation, uh, uh, but nothing that would, would even be noticed, really. So we're year one. <clears throat> Year one. Oh, Jesus. I didn't know how long it lasted. Because uh, most most of the peasants still had stores and um, seed potatoes from the previous year. Okay. Um, and farmers and fish, uh, they could still catch animals and they could catch fish and they could they, they had enough to get by. Things were very tough, yeah. but it, it wasn't um, starvation season. Okay. Also at the same time, uh, the British Prime Minister, and this was petitioned a little bit by Queen Victoria, mm. they, they, they wanted to help because this is, the, you know, their country, uh, so... I'm curious to see what help means. Well, um, they had a, a decent phase of help. So this is in uh-huh. 1845. So this is Prime Minister Robert Peel. Um, oh, he, yeah, yeah. he brought in uh, Indian meal from North America. So I think it was just like corn. Wh- wheat and corn or something like yeah. that. Um, and they sold that at discount prices to the co- to the poor. Uh, he repealed the corn laws. You don't need to know about that, but it, no. it, um, they, were, they put tariffs on bread in, imported into Britain. And so that would make bread oh, cheaper. Yeah. Okay. In, in Ireland, so that, that helped. Yep. Um, they also set up um, soup kitchens. Uh, Sweet. Potato soup kitchens? <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> I'd be missing my potatoes. I'd like a little bit. Here's potato soup. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we'll, come back to, we'll come back to that in a second. Yeah, so so, so what's in it? it's okay. not the worst. But in 1846, uh, potato crop failed again. Cool. And this time failed much worse, much more, much worse, much bigger. Not not well. Strong failure. It was stronger failure. Big bad fail. Uh, there were very few potatoes at all harvested that autumn. Now the problem was this time the food crisis was way worse because this was the second year, and they had eaten through all of their stores right. and planted. You know they'd eaten their stores and then planted the the seeds and hoping it would come, but the blight. Uh, 
uh, meant that nothing came out of the ground and they had nothing back in their stores. Reinfestans. <clears throat> okay. Uh, cool. And it was a cold winter as well. They're always cold winters. Um, mm. So this is when uh, the tenant farmers started to um, hit mass starvation. So cool. mo- uh, most of the deaths were not straight away starvation, but obviously the diseases that came with it. So you get typhus, you get dysentery, famine fever. Um, Famine (coughs) fever. uh, Eyewitnesses began to report whole villages lying in their cabins, dying of the fever. Uh, (coughs) At least it's a lingering death. And then another one, another year, another year. So 1847, they didn't have... um, How can you have another blight when you've got nothing left to blight? Well, here's the thing. uh, The the potato crop didn't fail that year, but because no potato farmers had anything to sow, you know, it's like, okay, Gary grew 100% of his one potatoes. So Yeah, great. uh, uh, So they they didn't have anything. So that was called Black 47, uh, still known as Black Black 47. Black 47. Yeah. Bingo. Uh, And that was was the worst year. So there was basically no food anywhere in the country. Well... Well, there must have been some. Yeah, no food for no food for the poor people. We'll come to that in a second. Tree bark and leather. So you get large bands of hundred hungry people wandering the countrysides, begging for food. Uh, uh, they flock to the workhouses, and so they all gather together. And then the typho- uh, typhoid spreads yeah, and yeah, insanitary yeah, yeah. conditions. You get everyone You're together, get thousands them shitting of... on the floor, and shut all the windows. Exactly, it's gonna be uh, fine. It's gonna it'll... be fine. Oh, oh. So back to the help that uh, that Britain. Uh, tried to give. Oh, I got a feeling. So, yeah, they had these soup kitchens yeah. and they had the corn laws. But in mid-1847, the Conservative Prime Minister, Robert Peel, mm-hmm. now just hold on to the, the labels here, Conservative, was replaced by the Liberal, Ooh. Sir John Russell. Now, Liberal... As a rule? Uh, well. Are hippies? Uh, no, no, not so hippies. Uh, liberal has a few different meanings and, and they uh, overlap. Yeah, yeah. They overlap quite well. Uh, but the Liberal in John Russell was more of the libertarian uh, sort oh, of thinking. Oh, excellent. So sort it out yourselves, mate. Yeah, basically. Basically. Uh, We've given you the chance by leaving you the fuck alone to well, work it out. We'll say sort it out yourselves, but they did some other things in there as well. Oh, look, because you've got to make it a challenge. Otherwise, where's the fun in that? <laughs> you've got to have something to push against to grow your resilience muscles. Libertarianism with challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're libertarian... <laughs> With a, with a twist. Yeah, so the Liberals cool. or the Whigs believed in laissez-faire or non-interference in the market, yeah. and they cut a whole bunch of these things. So Sweet. first off, um, soup kitchens? No, no more soup kitchens no. because... Um, Make you weak. That's it. <laughs> they, they, they worried that the three million people using them... See, three million people, remember, this is of a population of nine? nearly nine. So yeah. a third of the country. Yeah. They become dependent on the government. Um, oh, so you can't have that. You can't have that. I so, see their thinking. So it's the just, height of the famine. That's just logical. They stopped the soup kitchens. Good, 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 um, good. They also were reluctant to stop the export of other food from Ireland um, or control prices. Export and they, from? Yes, here's the thing. Okay. Uh, so during the whole thing, remember there was the the, the, um, the tenant farmers had a small acreage yeah. and then the, the landlords would have large acreage around. Yeah. Where, so on the large acreage, they'd have cattle and things like that that yeah. um, is owned by the landlords. And, and the, the tenant farmers would work there. Yep. But to feed themselves, they need their, their little potato yep. patch. Yep. Remember, cattle aren't affected by potato blight. So no. all the way through, Ireland continued to export large quantities of food, primar- primarily to Great Britain. Yep. Um, in fact, some people say, like, so this is beef and, and butter and things like that, uh, that they actually exported more food during the potato famine. Because, of course... We need money to buy potato. Oh. This was the only thing that the um, uh, whose government was it? Uh, Russell. Uh, yeah, after Peel. Yeah, after Peel. Um, they did. They did bring in the troops uh, to make sure that the the food exports could go nicely. So that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Um, so uh, yeah, eighteen forty seven. Records indicate that commodities such as peas, beans, rabbits, fish, and honey continue to be exported from Ireland, even as the Great Hunger ravaged the countryside. Interesting. <sighs> Um, well, I suppose they need to buy something to do when you're starving. You can't do it. Like you got to watch TV, <sighs> read a book. You can export other people's food while yeah, you're yeah, starving. But, but you get money and you spend that on... Well, the price of potatoes went up a long way. So you, you couldn't buy potatoes. Luxury items. Not for love, no money. No. Not for love, no money. Uh, just to... Just to um, the Russell government cancelled all, all further relief funding. Good. And um, the only thing that they did fund over this period was an increase in police and military presence. For... Fuck's 
sake. Because you know why they had to had to do that? Uh, um, I've got a few guesses. <laughs> well, well, uh, yeah, people are cranky, but they're they're uh, you know they're starving. But the thing is, they uh, a whole bunch of landlords thought, oh, you know what? This is an awesome chance to um, kick off <coughs> the unprofitable tenants off my land. Excellent idea. Yeah, because because they're not working very hard. No, they're lazy. Um, yeah. <clears throat> So, uh, uh, landlords around the country, they were meant to help out. There was a, there was a, um, uh, some legislation that said, oh, landlords go to look after your tenants, but they avoided it using this dodgy, well, uh, if you kick loop. them off, they're not your tenants. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Duh. Uh, one of the most high profile cases was that of major Dennis Mahon, um, of Stokestown estate. Mm -hmm. Um, he cleared, uh, 1500 families. So obviously that's families. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot off his land during the famine. Well, look, I, I, he had more than 1500 on his land. My God, that's a lot of land. Uh, I know, right? People. Yeah. This is small towns. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And he kicked them all out in the height of the famine. And being Irish and being Catholic, that means what 19 kids per family. I Potentially. See. At least Potentially. First. But see, the thing is as well, you know, obviously wow. uh, you're starving and then you're outside more. You're more exposed to the elements. Yeah. You're, you know, everything gets so much harder. But, obviously. you know, Ireland, pretty balmy kind of climate, so they'd be fine outside. Uh, yeah, balmy, balmy. Sleep yeah. under a, a coconut palm or something. <laughs> yes, the famous <laughs> Irish coconut Take palms. Take in the sun. Um uh, it seems like records show that like 70,000 families were evicted um, during the family uh, famine. Or, oh, I forgot to say, Mahan was murdered by his vengeful tenants. Can't tenants. imagine why. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the biggest museums to the famine is actually in his old house. And <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a little bit of, oh, that's nice to add. Uh, and here he was murdered. Fuck you, you con. Oh. That's what it would have been. Like, far out. That's just... Uh. So half a million people were evicted during the famine. While you're starving, you get kicked out by the landlords. And you'd get this... Um, yeah, so they'd have the police and military. The work that they're doing is evicting tenants. What's um, in it for the landlord if they don't have people to work the land? Oh, you, I, 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 theme parks. I mean, <laughs> what do you do? Well, maybe the cattle can run themselves. Like it's, of course it's they can. Self automatic so cattle. So more cows. I, I, to I, sell. I don't know. Like obviously you need workers. Oh, this is the other thing. Yeah. Um. So being evicted often meant that bailiffs and the sheriff, usually with a police or military escort, not only ejected tenants from their homes, but also commonly burned the cabins to prevent their reoccupation. Uh, Fucking assholes. It's like, amazing uh, how shitty people can be. Ah. Uh, and they would, they'd be like this. This is a, a bailiff's remark. Uh, what the devil do we care about you or your black potatoes? It was not us that made them black. You'll get two days to pay the rent, and if you don't know, you know the consequences. Okay. Well, you know where you stand. Oh. What the hell do we care? That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of people are people. Just, just Absolute horrible. Monsters. Don't give monsters. a shit. Monsters. Monsters. I don't Absolute. Get it. I don't get it. Never have. So it arrived in 1845. Um the first year, the potato was cut by half. The second year, output output fell by eighty yeah. percent, and this is when starvation really peaks. Sweet. It didn't didn't recover until uh, like potato crop didn't recover for uh, seven years all up until eighteen fifty two. Seven. By then, the damage was done. Uh, so the estimates people say is that about a million Irish men, women, and children uh, died during the famine. I'll be honest, I'm um, surprised it's that little. Oh, I know, I know. Um, but actually, it's it's a it's it's interesting. I'll come to this in a second. Yeah. And then at least a million. Um, maybe 1.5 million uh, emigrated from Ireland to North uh, America, to Canada, to, to Great Britain, uh, to Scotland. Um, all okay. Around. So, so you've, you've, you've gone from a population of uh, sort of nearly 9 million yeah. and you've lost like two, two and a half million, but, it, but then it actually started a, a long-term decline in yeah, the population. Yeah. But uh, the Irish population still is not back up to where it was um, 150 years ago. That's why. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, there's other, th other factors going on in here, but the fact that it's taken, um, yeah, the population of, is now about 6 million people. So it still hasn't, oh, hasn't they, recovered. They did go through that period where they were busy trying to kill each other. Other. That, that was pretty, that, that, that was that pretty good. That's true. Helps. I don't think they killed nearly as many. I don't think it's no, the I don't same think a, a million in what orange no. on green violence. No, not at no. all. Uh, another another big effect. It was the it was the fatal blow to the Irish language. Um, so uh, beforehand, okay. it, uh, Irish was spoken by about half the population. Yeah. Uh, by fifty years later, in nineteen hundred, only fifteen percent of the population. Uh, so do we assume the people who were most affected were the Irish or the, the Gaelic speakers? They were, yes, definitely. So it was a poorer person's language? At least that's how the strata of social life fell? 100%, yes. You don't speak English, let's impoverish you. Tony Blair, 
uh, when he was Prime Minister mm. uh, in 1997, he issued a formal apology to <laughs> Ireland for the UK government's handle, handling of the crisis. S- sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Whoops. Yeah, we, we didn't, we, we didn't mean it. Also, thing. it wasn't actually us, so, you know, whatever. So here's the question. What caused it? Now, Infestans. Infestans. Mr. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with hands. genetic p- uh, puny, puniness, <laughs> the lack of hybrid vigors. <laughs> Well, uh, okay, let's go the simplistic views because people actually do have this and, and you people... You call me simplistic? You no, no, you were bitch. going straight to the, to the highbrow. Table, you flip go, that t- Okay. You're going straight to the highbrow. I just, okay. no, this, Apology the accepted. Simplistic sort of views. Some people hold that it was <clears throat> it's just an ecological accident. It's just... Well, that's not untrue. It's just it's just nature. It's just nature doing Again, this. not untrue. Mm. Nature had a... Mm. And so, um, okay... I, I've I've heard people say things like that, and I did read someone saying other people had had said that, but I couldn't actually find an ecological accident. Okay. Um, the the next simplistic view is is the racist one. It's that the Irish themselves were promiscuous, slothful, and excessively dependent on the potato. It's it's the it's the. <laughs> It's just the it's, third line. The it's your line. genetic nature. You're promiscuous and slothful. Yeah. Also, I might add, those seem a little bit contradictory. <laughs> Being promiscuous is quite energetic, especially, I mean, you know, if you're going to go traditional, for the dude. You are slothful about work, but you fuck a lot. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, by a lot, I mean all the time. There was this funny little... And spots. This weird little thing where um, uh, someone from New York went to uh, went to Ireland in 1844, so before the, the famine, yeah. um, uh, to investigate the condition of the Irish poor. Um, uh, her name was Asenath Nicholson. And... The sight of a woman and her daughters carding and knitting gave her pause. This was an unusual sight, for seldom had I seen in Ireland a whole family employed among the peasantry. Oh. Ages of poverty have taken everything out of their hands, but preparing and eating the potato and then sitting listlessly on a stool, lying in their <laughs> straw or sauntering about the street. <laughs> well, I've eaten my spuds. They do nothing but eat potato. Oh, and sit still. So, yeah, look, there, there was certainly a whole lot of racism out there oh. that, that said they were lazy. Uh, Promiscuous and, and too dependent on El Spudo. Okay, so the slightly more nuanced view, which is which is actually has solid truth to it, but yeah. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll complexify it afterwards. Cool is lack of genetic diversity. Like, well, diversity. So the fact that you are relying, everyone is relying on not only one crop, so it's just potatoes, yeah. and then it's one genetic one type. that Irish lumper. It's in in a in a moist environment for a crop that lives underground. I feel like you're asking for some trouble. I feel really, I feel like, really. Mm. You know, I, I think you could just go, what level of genetic diversity are you eating uh, and, and are you relying on as, uh, as, a, as a country? Yeah. I think if you're getting down to one, that's freakishly narrow. And I know that... No, no, that's just, it's specialised. I know that, you know, we uh, now globally, we rely on like five crops plus a whole bunch of other frippery. But, you know, that there's like wheat and rice and, and stuff like that and, and corn, uh, other <coughs> potato. Uh, and miscellaneous. I, I know we do, but it's not nearly as narrow as that. So no, and and that's true. And and people actually, this is this is something that a lot of theorists still uh, talk about. Yeah. Um, as the one of the key causes of the potato blight. Uh, so I read this Stephen Lands, Landsberg in Slate. If there's if there's another economic lesson to be learned from the Great Famine, it's that mm. it pays to diversify. Near total reliance on a single crop, whether for production or, or consumption, or in the Irish case both, invites near total disaster. Yeah, and sure, not wrong, not wrong. But um, I guess there's more to it. Oh, well, it's almost like there's a, there's actually someone to blame, oh. and and it's uh, were they a libertarian? Oh, it might have been. Okay. Might have been. Okay, so first one. Wait, what are we blaming them for? The blight or the plight? Oh, and there's an interesting question. That's what yeah. I'll, I'll get to at the end. Okay. That's, that's what I'll get to at the end. That's okay. good. Oh, I like your framing. Oh, the blight I'm, I'm the a rhymer. I oh do it all God. the time. <laughs> okay, so th- there were mistakes. So both um, the the peasantry themselves and obviously uh, the different governments of the time, they made, made a bunch of mistakes. So yeah. Yeah. Um, the first one, and I think this is – it's – it'd be hard not to do it, was to assume that it was temporary. The blight would be, you know, this is one, blow over. one bad year, nah, it'll blow over. It. Yeah. And so that second year where they're Tighten like... Tighten your belt, next right, year, boom. Plan them back in and yep. they'll come back. Uh, yep. But obviously the ground is full of all of the blight fungus. Did and they understand that? No, no. Cool, uh, they cool. didn't understand that. But 
and it's well, this is a little bit like our pandemic thinking now. That which is fine now; it's fixed. But obviously, this idea that oh, we fix it and then it's gone, as opposed to we find a way to just live with it, and that's great. Can but do both. Do you know I was offered the AZ today? Oh, were you? But I also got a flu shot, and you can't have them both at the same time. What? No. I was like, oh, I'll take them both. No, you can't. You can only have one or the other. I was like, oh, okay, I'll take flu first. Oh, you are so practical. Yeah, I know. <sighs> <laughs> I'm off for a boozy food weekend. I don't want to be getting, you know, oh, yeah, like fair the, enough. the two day after effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Oh, I'm I'm jealous. Uh yeah, and so that that was a, a legitimate a big mistake. And so mm. uh, but in the in fairness, understanding the ecology of fungus and and how things would linger, uh, it's a tough one. Not big on the peasant list. But, you know, we can go more precise on on laying the blame. Sure. Um, as historian John Kelly wrote in 2012, the relief policies that England employed during the famine parsimonious, mm. short-sighted, grotesquely twisted by religion and ideology, uh-huh. produced tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of needless deaths. I know, I'd say probably... Sh- shocked, I tell you. An awful lot of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, so Roger Cantwell, he was one of those evictees. Um, one of the worst policies was the extended poor law of 1847, which resulted in the destruction of our little home and eviction of our family. However, uh, if not for this, our family might still be living in Ireland instead of America. But we're not. So, but, uh, yeah, so... Um, so... British policies were terrible, yeah. but even that doesn't actually get um, get to the the end cause because really Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, yes, no, uh, and I hate to hate to get this from a libertarian think tank, but um, <laughs> it's actually I, I could get it from other places, but I just happened to no, read no, no, it. Go for it. Go, no. wait, go to the place you hate. Well, this is they framed it like this: British Prime Minister Tony. Uh, Tony Blair apologised for doing too little in response to the Irish potato famine of the 19th century that Ooh. killed one million people. And we do not like but, that. But in fact, the English government was guilty of doing too much. Of course it uh, was. <laughs> so so they went a bit insane and, oh, and they were like, God. you know, you should have got rid of everything sooner. And you're like, oh, God, you libertarians. But what the fuck are they? Uh, carry on. But you're going to tell me what they're no, talking no, about. No, I'm just going to give them them their defence that they were like, uh, actually, the big problem was the English land tenancy system. In the first place. In the first place. You know, you kick everyone off the land and you give them a tiny patch to grow where the only yeah. thing that will actually feed your families yeah. is potatoes. Yeah, you got to go for freaking calories and filler. You know, so, yeah. you know, they've been great grazing cows um, for hundreds of years. Well, forever. Um Okay, not forever. Uh, and yeah, then no, suddenly you change things. Just about two million years. And as we said, it's that thick milk drinking and all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> but when the British colonised um, in the 15th and 16th centuries, yeah. uh, they transformed much of the countryside into extended grazing land and then shoved all the tenant farmers into tiny patches Sweet. where the only thing that they could grow that would actually feed them was the potato. Yeah. So the cause of this actually goes down to, no, back to the, the original corner. the original. Uh, original settlement that that made the Irish make these choices. Well, arguably, then you could go back and say, well, the reason the English were a pack of shits was because of what the tribes coming together in the face of the Roman army. Right. And if we're going to take that Maybe. back further, I blame Romulus and Remus for bringing that tiny little village into you know something <laughs> coherent and strong. Here's the thing. You know what else I would blame? Evolution. If human beings, <laughs> right? Well, here's the question: uh, plight or blight? A lot of people say. I read this just the other day. I was reading about something else and they were like, oh, this um, this was a natural disaster. And it's like, uh, fuck off. There is no such thing as a natural disaster. There is no... Uh, hurricanes? No. I'll, I'll, I'll explain in a second. Okay. So potato blight or Hurricane Katrina or bushfire or anything. Yeah. There is natural hazards. There are clearly natural hazards. There is there is uh, a fungus that attacks our potatoes yeah. or there is a, a hurricane that uh, forms, our forms out there. Um, or, there, or there are bushfires that... Attack our potatoes. <laughs> yep. But it's not a natural disaster. Those are natural hazards, but it's our choices beforehand and our choices during uh, that turn something into a disaster. Whoa, I know. And whoa. So this is the thing. That there's actually there's actually advocacy groups out there. And I think you can just Google this. No such thing as a natural disaster. But I think it's really worth Man, saying. that would go in multiple directions. <laughs> but there is there is no such thing as a natural disaster. But that's just like it's, you know, no no um, no person starving on earth right now is because of a lack of food in, yeah. in the world. You're starving from politics, uh, not food. I, I appreciate. Yeah, no, totally. That's you know, it. That's it. You are. Shit, yeah. You are starving mm. from politics. Yeah, that's that's the thing. But I think it's also even even down with um, you know Hurricane Katrina or something that is happening far faster. Mm. Yes, there are, there are clearly natural hazards. A tsunami. 
clearly there are things that can threaten our lives, but it's our choices beforehand and our choices during yeah. that turn something into a disaster. And the thing that gets yeah, me, yeah, this okay. is like, you know, it's like, you know, an in insurance where they go, oh, it was an act of God or, <laughs> um, or, you know, you occasionally get it in a lot of um, cyclists. Uh, whinge about this, the car hit the pedestrian or the car hit the, you know, it's, it's putting agency into something that, oh, it's just nature. It's just God. Yeah, it's yeah. just the car. Yeah. No, it was humans that made that choice. You drove dangerously. You, you put houses in dangerous places. You, you, so you do have a little streak of the libertarian. In you, don't you? <laughs> No, I don't. What are you with your no, individual I responsibility? I, I, no, I am pro society and government choosing things right. I just, I, I want I think the state to do it. We can't just abandon shit and say, oh, it's just nature. I mean, the act of God thing is despicable. And that's the thing. Throw and that's, up your hands. that's the thing that got me in, in this originally is this, this idea of, oh, it's an act of God. Or well, it's well just, it happened. Well, whatever. Get over it. Yeah. So don't. Don't get over don't, it. Don't, don't. Oh. Say there is a natural disaster. Just don't use that phrase. There's no such thing. Because if you do use it, we're going to find where you live and we're going to come and trash your house. So as I said before, the Irish are no longer number one in potatoes. Uh, they're not even, uh, I think they're below the English and the Canadians. They're about number 18. Um, and even more, they seem to be declining. So over the last 50 years, they've gone from maybe 140 kilos of potatoes down to 70 kilos of potatoes, something because like that. Ireland is now basically a hipster country. It is, it is. And so there's a multi-million dollar ca uh, promotional campaign across the UK and Ireland to encourage the Irish to eat more spuds. Oh, for fuck's sake. And can you, uh, th this is their slogan. Potatoes, more than a bit on the side. It's a, <laughs> it's a joint initiative of the Irish fo Food Board and, and Britain's <laughs> Agriculture and Horticulture. Um, <laughs> more than a bit on the side. Uh, that's good. We really need to challenge the consumer perceptions of fresh potatoes, particularly amongst younger age group well, and why? hipsters, Will obviously. Will this be the potato board? Yeah, exactly. This yeah. is the potato board. It's not like the, the <laughs> Department of Health went, oh, no, no, more spuds <laughs> is the trick. Um, and in 2015, scientists at the JR Simplot Company developed a potato genetically engineered to resist the potato blight. So there you go. When? 2015. So they really got onto that? More than a bit on the side. <laughs> don't don't get onto it. What was that blight 160 years ago? <laughs> Let's look into that. Because well, there you go. Yeah, look, I, I heard a similar one was in um, Samoa. They're very reliant, and that region yep. relying on taro. And oh, there, was a, there was a great taro blight. Very, oh. very similar implication. One crop. What era? <sighs> Before. Ah. Earlier, <laughs> but was it the era? I think it was 20th was century. It, was it the era where governments are like, no, you should work harder uh, and I mean, eat I, your mush? I think or? it was less organised than that because it was you know over disparate lands. We'd had multiple levels of government, including village chiefs and so forth. But I think I think it was 20th century. Oh, well, I just remember hearing snippets of it when I was yeah, working cool. around there. There you go. There is no such thing as a natural disaster. No, humans only, caused only it. Hasn't. Humans. It's but, your fault. And. And my fault. No, just, no, it's, just blame it's me. It's everyone else's fault. Except you. If you're listening, it's your fault. You're humans. The Wholesome Show is me, Will Grant, and him, Rod Lambert. It's brought to you by the Australian Centre for the Public Awareness of Science and Unnatural Disasters. <laughs> <laughs>